Hey guys, I don't do this often, but if you're watching my videos for the first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that whenever I'm putting out a new video, you get a notification for it. Okay. Every time any H1B related thing happens, I get a lot of DMs in my on my Instagram with news links. Um, I recently made two videos about H1B. These videos are well thought, well researched, um, and you should definitely watch these. I'm going to leave the link in the description so that you can watch those before watching this. It'll just help you understand this better. So a proposal was released on November 30th, which made the whole Trump H1B correlation heat up in some ways. But before we dive deep in what is proposed, let me put a quick recap clip from the previous video. This will explain to you in a jiffy about the number of H1Bs out there and how the process works. Let's put 30 seconds on the clock and talk about what I mentioned in the previous video. There are mainly these cohorts, undergrads, grad, postgraduates, H1B and spouses. And they are on these visas, F1, H1B, H4. There are 85,000 H1Bs given per year out of which 20,000 is booked for master's students and 6,800 are reserved for residents of Chile and Singapore. Remaining 58, 1,200 are being extremely exploited by Indian IT companies. You can apply for cap exempt H1B and I'll make a video about it. Alright, back to the normal video. Now that you understand that, uh, let's see what we were expecting when Donald Trump became the president. Uh, we were expecting that the minimum salary will be raised from 60,000 US dollars to 100,000 US dollars for the people on H1B and there will be a new criteria presented for H1B workers. Well, these are still speculations and nothing has been cleared until now. But in the new proposed rule titled as registration requirement for petitioners seeking to file H1B petitions on behalf of CAP subject aliens. That, that was not easy to remember. Okay, here are the details on what is proposed. We're going to use a, use the word petition a lot. A petition is a formal return request signed by many people appealing to authority with respect to a particular case. Consider it as a file of uh, every form, evidence and supporting documents. The current H-1B selection process goes like this. All the employers submit a complete H-1B application package. This takes a lot of time, human power, money, resource, a lawyer, a human resource person. This petition is then submitted to USCIS by your employer. Once USCIS receives it, it runs into their lottery system. All the people who receive H-1B are of course like super happy and the people who do not receive it gets the fees back. Now this process includes a lot of human work in terms of handling physical docs, preparing the file, managing all of this. Also last year USCIS received a, about 192,000 registration and every registration have to put it put in the full-fledged petition. Now, here is how the proposed H-1B selection process looks like. First of all, everything becomes electronic. The employers at the first stage registers himself or herself online. All of these registrations are turned into the lottery system. Now, focus. Earlier, the lottery system was first. Master students will be run into 20,000 spaces and the remaining will be put into the 65,000 visa spaces. Now, they're proposing to turn that around. First, you're put in the common pool with everyone uh, into that 65,000 pool. And all the people who have master's degree and a degree from the US university will then be put into 20,000 pool. To do a quick recap, the current visa system looks like this. All the students are put into first um, the 20,000 pool. The remaining of them who, ha who didn't get a visa will be put into the 65,000 visa spaces. Now, they're proposing that they want to turn that around. Everyone who has registered or who has filed a petition for H-1B will be put into the 65,000 pool first. And then the remaining people who have been rejected from that, the remaining students who have been rejected from that, out of those, only the students will be put into the 20,000 pool. The other people who are rejected will get a refund. This reversing of order will increase the chances for US degree holders by 
which is a good sign for all the students who are watching this video. If you want to read this in more details, I'm going to leave a link of the 139 page document. Everything is written down there with minute details on how it will save money and increase efficiency. Uh, this bill is proposed for the fiscal year 2020, so not extremely urgent. Also, just one more thing that this is still a proposal and it's open for public commenting so they can comment until January 2nd. This electronic registration process uh, can approximately save up to 66 million US dollars annually. To conclude this whole video into one life, uh, they're proposing to move a system which is in paper to electronic system and also benefit the student who are studying in the United States of America. Well, this is definitely a positive sign for people like you and me. And uh, just letting you know, this is just a proposal and it's still open for public commenting until January 2nd, 2019. And I think that sums up the video. Thank you so much guys for watching this one. I hope this was useful. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.